Hi everyone, my name is Shannon Greer. I'm the communications coordinator here at the Louisville Bar Association. Today we have with us Dr. Patrick Lewis from the Filson Historical Society. This is our second installment of our community conversations in February. Dr. Lewis is, um, is the director of collections and research at the Filson Historical Society and has experience with the National Parks Service and the Kentucky Historical Society. Uh, the Filson Historical Society, which I've said a lot by this point, they have millions of rare manuscripts, thousands of museum objects, and hundreds of portraits preserving the history of Kentucky and the Ohio Valley. Their collections have helped researchers worldwide, and currently they're working on their Forgotten Foundations exhibit, which focuses on Louisville's lost architecture. It uses photographic and architectural records to explore the history and ask questions of what will happen to downtown as the pandemic emptied many of its workers, and also how can downtown remain a viable hub in historic buildings preserved to meet the ends or the needs of a changing city. So that exhibit will be opening next week, February 18th. And with that, I'll hand it over to Dr. Lewis. Thanks so much, Shannon. Uh, really happy to be here. And thank you for mentioning Forgotten Foundations. We're in the process of installing that exhibit right now. Um, having just had a really fantastic exhibit uh, called Women at Work uh, about uh, women 100 years ago in the, the era of uh, suffrage activism as women were entering the, the workplace for the first time. But Forgotten Foundations uh, is really this um, perfect example uh, with all those questions that you just raised about how is our past relevant uh, to us today uh, and where can the Filson be a conversation point for this city to come together and, and reflect on what we know, what we don't know, whose stories we're telling, um, and what that means uh, for, for us going forward. How do we make better decisions uh, as a city? And that's, that's really the, the origin of uh, the Filson um, uh, uh, about 140 years ago uh, was, was really along those lines. How do we come together um, to have conversations using our past and build uh, a more prosperous Louisville? That was the intent of, of those original founders. I've got some slides to share um, about the Filson, so I'm going to uh, get those moving. And we can get a little overview of what the Filson's about. So thanks, uh, Shannon, for sharing those, <clears throat> those stats about the Filson. As you can see here, um, we're over 2 million historical documents, 50,000 rare books, 10,000 museum uh, objects. Uh, we've been publishing uh, historical scholarship since 1884 was our first publication. We started publishing books, and then we <clears throat> shifted to a quarterly history journal um, about 75 years ago. All of that is, is fully accessible um, on our website, those publications. And then we continue to run uh, a scholarly journal called Ohio Valley History that we've had going for a little over 20 years in partnership with uh, the University of Cincinnati and the Cincinnati Museum Center. Um, our portraits, we're, we're uh, really uh, quite famous for our portrait collections. So uh, especially heavy in, in antebellum portraiture of uh, Kentucky painters, Kentucky subjects, and the Ohio Valley as well. Um, uh, photographs, prints, um, and events, uh, you know, lectures, book talks, community conversations are really our focus. You can see our, uh, our main building uh, there on 3rd Street, 1310 uh, South 3rd Street, uh, right at the corner of 3rd and Ormsby, uh, was uh, a mansion that was built in, in that uh, really fantastic era of, of what we now call old Louisville, but then was sort of the neighborhood to live in uh, around the turn of the century. Uh, so we moved into that space in the mid 80s. You can get a, a, a glimpse inside of our research library there, uh, which uh, originally was guest bedrooms for the family. Um, and that's the best corner because it gets all this really nice afternoon sunlight. It's a fantastic place to be right now and do some research. You can see the, the house there on third in the background of this uh, photo. And then we uh, undertook a significant uh, expansion of our campus and, and reached all the way over to 4th Street as well, building the Owsley Brown Second History Center, uh, which gave us two important things. It gave us collection storage space because we were running out of room to keep all of that, <clears throat> all that stuff that I mentioned before, um, and public event space. Uh, so we've got uh, two, uh, 
good sized lecture halls, multi-purpose spaces um, that we use for our own programs that we're mostly virtual right now. Um, we can hold uh, about 200 people seated in either one of those for, for lectures. Uh, we can also configure those for uh, rentals, uh, weddings, board meetings, corporate retreats, all of that kind of stuff. We've got full catering facilities um, as well. So that's, that's a really great service that we can provide to some of our, uh, our sponsors in the corporate world uh, who can use that space. And it really is just absolutely magnificent. Fantastic views of old Louisville. Um, really great reflections of the themes that are important to the Filson. You can see the staircase down there in the, in the bottom left, um, which is, is freestanding inside of the, the building um, and switches back. You can kind of see the ripples um, in the wood paneling there. It's supposed to, to mirror the Ohio River, right? So it's thematically hitting on what makes the Filson um, uh, fantastic. And then you can see some of our collection storage spaces. Uh, there again, some of our, our portrait storage there uh, in the top left. Our mission, very simply, is to collect, preserve, and share the significant history and culture of Kentucky and the Ohio Valley. Uh, but within that, definitions are everything. What's significant? Whose stories um, are we telling? Whose stories can we tell? Whose stories have we not told in the past and how can we, we rectify that? What is the Ohio Valley? That's a, a, it's, a, it's a cultural definition that changes over time. Um, and so that gives us a lot of freedom to, uh, to collect um, very broadly, right? So, so early on in our collection in you know, the era of uh, the, the late 18th century when Daniel Boone and other uh, American settlers are coming over the mountains, you know, for them, Kentucky, uh, is playing on a, on a geopolitical sphere that runs all the way up to the Great Lakes in Pittsburgh and down in New Orleans uh, and Pensacola. So, you know, the, this is a very broad uh, collecting region, primarily, though, anchoring in Kentucky. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the implied question in that mission statement is, is how? Um, and, and do we do that work of collecting and preserving and sharing alone? No, absolutely not. We've got to, to work with our existing partners in the cultural sector here in Louisville, but then also across the state, across the region. I mentioned we co-publish a journal with a couple of organizations in Cincinnati, for example. So where do we find support for that work? I'm the director of collections and research. So, uh, so this is, uh, these are the big questions that I deal with um, every day. Um, we have a, a really fantastic monthly uh, curatorial meeting where everybody brings in new proposals, stuff that they've been offered, things that they've come aware are up for sale. Um, and, and we talk about, you know, which ones of these we should go after, what we're going to invest our, our, our financial resources in acquiring, in, <clears throat> in processing, uh, in rehousing, boxing, cataloging, describing, and making those things available for research, right? And so, so much of that work that we do is getting those materials ready for an exhibition um, or a researcher to walk in to discover that collection on our website through a finding aid uh, and be able to come in here and, and take a look at it. Increasingly, that is involving, um, you know, doing digitization work of, of certain uh, items that kind of our tip of our pyramid of our, our, our things that intersect, say, with contemporary discussions going on in the city, the needs of, of our partners in public education, right? Like what documents do the teachers need to, to insert into their curriculum? So all those decisions kind of uh, help us prioritize what collections we, we push through, um, both acquiring, but then also providing deeper and deeper levels of, of access to. Real quick, um, some of our, our recent acquisitions, uh, these actually aren't that recent anymore. Um, these are things that came in uh, in 2020. Um, but you can see, you know, we, we go from, uh, from uh, 1850s uh, steamboat journals to 1870s pottery made in Indiana. Um, we've got uh, a 1930s Louisville Motorcycle Club uniform, which is super cool. Got these really awesome like riding breeches and this big old Harley uh, boots and stuff like that. It's cool. Um, uh, works by, by Jewish and African American artists. The, the one in the center there is an absolutely incredible piece that's now um, after some, some uh, really intense uh, stabilization and preservation work um, up in our main uh, collections reading room. 
Uh, it's, uh, it's by a local artist named Red Biddix. It started out during the protest in 2020 as a, a plywood sheet that covered up one of the buildings downtown. Um, and then after the, the protests were over, it, it came down and she created this incredible work um, on it. So it really is our, our sort of standout acquisition that, that talks about these contemporary um, issues that, that our city has faced and, and putting that in the reading room alongside our, our portraits, um, you know, that, that covered 250 years of Kentucky history. It really does bring this past present connection to all the research that happens in there. Of course, public programs uh, are important as well. Um, we've, uh, we, we run about one or two a week, um, well over, uh, you know, 40, 50 a year. Um, a lot of those are new books uh, that are relevant to the history of Kentucky. Um, but then we also run an endowed lecture series called the Gertrude Polk Brown series that um, invites kind of national bestsellers to come to Louisville. We usually do those uh, at a larger venue, maybe somewhere like Brown, um, where before uh, in 2019, we were, we were seeing about a thousand people coming to, to hear history lectures, which is, is just absolutely incredible. Uh, commitment that Louisville has to uh, to our city, um, but you can sort of get the the variety of of the topics that we uh, we present just from the the screenshots here, going from uh, enslaved people owned by Native Americans in Oklahoma, uh, the the artist Matthew Harris Jewett, who of course we have uh, plenty of his works here, Sophonisba Breckenridge, suffragist um, and lawyer here uh, in Kentucky. Uh, moving forward to Tom Harden's really fantastic photographs for the Courier Journal uh, of, of Kentucky sports, politics, you name it, uh, in the 20th century. So we sort of run the gamut of providing uh, lots of different topics. And as we do that, we, we decided to start sharing a couple of years ago um, this uh, statement uh, that frames a lot of our uh, community conversations. Um, because the past becomes very tense and, and people feel um, you know, deeply invested in the, in the narratives, the stories that they grew up with. Um, and and you know, at the same time, people view um, you know, the history and, and, and study of the past as vectors for, for change and critique of contemporary society. We want all of those people to come together and engage in that conversation. Uh, so we, we came up with this uh, program statement that uh, tells us that, that pills and presentations are difficult and frequently resonate with issues that face us today. And that's by design. That's why we're here. Um, and, and really, that is what uh, the Filson was founded upon. I mentioned that in the 1880s, um, it was a, a, a venue to come debate the, the past and then shape the future, inspire a better future for Louisville. That was done. Um, by a, a fairly demographically homogenous set of folks. They were largely white, they were all white men. Uh, they were from, from very old families in the bluegrass. They, they came from backgrounds of immense privilege. Um, and so for all that they had in common, uh, they were also a, a, an almost even mix of Union and Confederate veterans, right? And so uh, it, it took a, a great deal of doing for them to put aside the, the hostilities of their youth and come back together and honestly engage um, with Kentucky history. Uh, and, and the Filson was a space uh, where they could do that together uh, and, and, and try and be uh, more proactive. A couple of, of things that we're doing in 2022, um, we have a handful of, of grant funded projects that we're really excited about. Um, we have a Native American collections assessment and repatriation project. Um, one of the earliest uh, subjects of interest for the, the old Filson was uh, this, this history of, of settlement and frontier uh, Kentucky. And that, that meant that they acquired a, a fairly significant uh, holdings of Native American objects, including some human remains, um, ceremonial objects, weapons, tools, kind of it runs the, the, the gamut of all of those things, particularly the human remains and the ceremonial objects we know don't belong in our, our, in our storage spaces. They belong back with those, those tribes that they were taken from. So we're working to build those relationships with those nations and, and move those objects out and then also work with them to decide, you know, what objects do we have in our collection that, you know, according 
according to their, their beliefs and traditions, they're fine with us maintaining, making available for research. What can we use going forward? And then how can we bring the perspective of those tribes, again, who have largely been removed and they're living out in the Midwest, they're living in Oklahoma, they're, they're wherever they are. Um, and how do we bring them back into the interpretation of, of the history of Kentucky? Along those same lines, we have an NEH grant right now uh, to, uh, to uh, bring back a project called the First American West, uh, which is a digital history project that we and the University of Chicago and the Library of Congress all put together in the late 1990s. It was one of the first large scale digital history projects. Um, unfortunately, the technology underlying that um, is, is uh, out of date and the Library of Congress pulled it down a few years ago. Um, and so we're gonna, we're gonna bring all that back, but then supplement um, those materials with, again, new voices that, that give a broader range of perspective of who's present out here on the 18th century frontier in Kentucky. Um, we've also got a community history fellows project. We're really excited about this. We just pulled together our first cohort of, of uh, community historians, everyday folks from across Louisville representing a, a, a diverse swath of geography all parts of the city of faith, of race, of gender, of, of uh, socioeconomic status, um, bringing, again, in the spirit of, of the original Pilsen, bringing everyday folks together to, to work on projects that are of interest to their communities. We've got some oral history, we've got some book publications, we've got uh, some food-based projects. It's really gonna be a fantastic mix. So they're gonna start meeting this spring and then this fall, we're gonna have this celebration of all these different communities where this cohort sort of moves together across the city and, and uh, is able to celebrate <clears throat> the histories of these different communities that we've got there. And then uh, we announced uh, at the beginning of this year that we're going to be working to build an endowment for an African-American curator uh, and a collections initiative that will ensure uh, Black representation in the historic record going forward in ways that, you know, quite frankly, we can't uh, say we're, we're done with the, the, the care um, that it was in the past. So again, sort of assessing the, the stories that we can't tell because they're lost right now, but then making sure that we uh, again, sustain good relationships with all of who will make sure that everybody's story is being told. So if anybody's got any questions about that, uh, you are free to get in touch with me. My email address is there, Patrick Lewis at PhilsonHistorical.org. If you've got any specific research questions, um, there's also our general research account, which is research at PhilsonHistorical.org as well. And then I'm going to stop sharing my screen. All right. Well, thank you so much. I really enjoyed that presentation. Um, I honestly haven't been to the Filson Historical Society yet, and I'm kicking myself because the space looks great. Um, I know you all were closed for a bit because COVID, like we all were. Um, if, yeah. Are you all fully open now? If I wanted to come by next week for that exhibit, do I just come on in or schedule something? Yeah, absolutely. So um, through for a little while longer, just because of staffing concerns, we are uh, asking folks to make research appointments. We are open Monday through Friday, 9 to 4.30, right? So, so get on the internet, schedule an appointment if you want to come up and do research. The exhibits are open um, for folks to just drop in and take a look at any time. Um, so, so after next Friday, when we get Forgotten Foundations up, anybody's welcome to come in and take a look at that. And we've got another exhibit um, up right now called A Child's World, which is about uh, children's experiences in, in Kentucky history from the, the 18th to the 20th century. Um, so you're free to come in and see those. Um, we also do every day a two o'clock uh, tour of the, the Ferguson Mansion and the whole campus. So if you want to kind of see the whole place um, and, and including just absolutely incredible pieces of art from the Pilsons collection, but then they're also just built into this really wonderful space we have. You're welcome to come do that as well. Um, we are starting, aiming to uh, move back to in-person programming uh, in March or April. Um, and we'll just keep our fingers crossed that, uh, that we can keep that promise. <laughs> All right. Well, that sounds great. I'm absolutely going to add that to my list to come for that two, two o'clock tour next week. So <laughs> absolutely do it. Sounds right. great. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm going to drop the link to the Filson Historical Society's website so people can make an appointment and just see what you all have on going on there. Sounds great. We look forward Thank to seeing you. everybody.